Today, we're going to spend some time to better understand the carbon cycle. Too often in society, we talk about CO2. We're producing too much CO2. Carbon dioxide is an issue. So today, this is what we'll talk about today. Carbon dioxide and where it's from and how come we see some imbalance in our environment. So we're going to start with uh, what happened several tens of millions year, of years ago or 100 million years ago, even more. We know that if you go back that far back, there were no humans yet, yet. There were no cars, no manufacturers. So you end up with a mountain here, a small environment, trees, that's wonderful. And we have in times little volcanoes. So we have a volcano here. So what kind of portion of the carbon cycle we did have 100 million years ago? So the first thing to keep in mind will be photosynthesis. So we had photosynthesis like this. So that means that we had water plus carbon dioxide and through what was happening in leaves and in plants, it created glucose, for example, as well as a lot of different nut uh, nutrients and structure for the plants and oxygen. So it's all good. So we had plants taking CO2 out of the environment and then adding more oxygen. A few things was going on. We had volcanoes and through volcanoes, we had CO2 going in the environment. Here we had sometimes we had some trees are burning and some of those trees would create CO2. But then we had lots of plants that was taking the CO2 back into the cycle here. So we had a cycle that was fairly, fairly stable. And there was a time if you go back even further than this, you had so much, so many plants that often the quantity of CO2 decreased uh, over the millions of years and more oxygen came about in the atmosphere. So over the billions of years, there was a change in the atmosphere that created life as we know it through evolution. Perfect. So this is a hundred million years ago. Now there's a few things that happens as well. As we had trees here, over the years, the decades, the centuries, some of those trees would burn, some of them would fall down on the ground. So what would happen is that you would have an increase of carbon rich soil right here. So sometimes if you have a garden, you have some dark soil and the dark soil, soil is full of organic matter and we put it in the garden because vegetables grow much better. Because of the spring, uh, because of the fall, leaves will fall down this way. There'll be an increase of dark soil here because of the wind. At the bottom of the lake here, you'll have some sediments that will come about. And this was happening over centuries and millennia. However, if you go forward for millions of years, tens of millions of years, so those trees will come in, into cycle, would come and go. So what would happen is that you'd have more and more or a thicker layer of this. You also had through the wind more and more sediments here that was filling out the lake. So what happened here is that you had a, la a layer of thick organic matter based on plants that were living and dying. Perfect. So that's one thing that happened. But if you take tens of millions of years and hundreds of millions of years, a few things also happen. Volcanoes kept on erupting, but you also had erosion going on here. So you had erosion. And through the erosion, some of the land and the soil from the mountain came down the valley and created layers of sediments. Consequence of that, let's see if we can make an updated version here. So the the version will be, I have ground like this. That's perfect. I also have new sediments. 
that was added. So we have sediments that was added here. So we had here the volcano still going on this way. We had the mountain that started to be a bit lower because many, after millions of years, the mountain decreased and filled up the valley right here. So what do we have? We still have a valley that has trees. With blossoming cherry trees. And then let's see if I can pick this out like this. And I think that's quite nice. My lake has disappeared, so that we have here a plane where we have things going on. Perfect. Perfect. So now we have, let's put these. 119.50, and then going beyond. What happened in the last 100 years is that humans, the, the human population started to grow and grow. So that's one thing. As the population grew, we needed more resources. We wanted to have more goods, and we needed more energy. So what happens is that we have humans that are right here, and we have little houses. I know it's not up to scale. So little houses were built. That was great. We could have humans. Perfect. Now, a few things that humans also like, they like their cars. In order to be able to run their cars, what do they need? They need fossil fuels. They need oil. They need gas. So what has happened is that we have wells. So we had a well here of gas or oil well that was going down. So here we were able to get the fossil fuel, fossil fuel, fuel like this. Perfect. Let's see if I can rewrite this. So we have fossil fuel that were used for cars. We also had coal. That is also part of fossil fuel used for the industrial revolution at the end of the 1800. We also have natural gas that are being used to heat homes and also for manufacture. So here, if you have, we have humans that do want a lot more things. So we have buildings with the chimneys. But because we have buildings and we need we need place, uh, we need room, and we cut the tree here and we cut the tree there, so we can have more room. And then again, we have more buildings. Perfect. Now, what is interesting from this point is that with more people that are using fossil fuel, using coal, also using natural gas, what would happen is all of these started to create and adding more CO2 in the atmosphere here. That's the first thing. Now, on top of that, we still have the volcanoes that are going on. So we have naturally occurring carbon dioxide. That's nothing to worry about. Now, what happens though, is that photosynthesis, which was a process taking out carbon dioxide from the environment, from the trees and the plants, there we have less and less of them because we want to have more houses because we have more humans. So what happens here is that by decreasing the number of trees, then photosynthesis uh, started to be in decline. So this is one thing. Another thing that the, carb the natural gas is giving us is often we use new plastic created from fossil fuels as well. What's interesting with, with plastic is that we need more and more manufacture for them, and we're creating more and more pollution as well for them. Pollution that is not easy for plants. So what happened is here is that the carbon cycle that was a, that was a cycle that was more or less in equilibrium millions of years ago, right now there's an imbalance. There's more and more increase in production of CO2, and there's less and less trees or plants to be able to 
take care of that carbon dioxide. So nowadays we are talking about what can we do to actually minimize. So we talk about carbon dioxide in the environment causing a lot of issues. So the whole thing is how can we minimize how much carbon dioxide we produce, but also increase how we can take carbon dioxide out of the environment. There's all kinds of technologies going on. And if you want a video about technologies to take out carbon dioxide for the atmosphere, please tell me. I'll be more than happy to do a video on this. Otherwise, the plants that we use to have, that we used to use to decrease carbon dioxide and help us with materials, they're losing the battle right now. So here we have now, we're using fossil fuel, which are what we call reservoirs. They're reservoirs of carbon-rich matter, either in a, as a crude oil, as coal, as a natural gas, and we're using it to fuel our need for energy. So here the carbon cycle is still present. However, it's no longer as in an equ equilibrium as it used to be. And that is a difficulty we have right now. So at the beginning, beginning we talked about the carbon cycle. Then I talked about how it's becoming less and less in equilibrium. And the whole idea here is we need people like you to bring it back so that we can find a way to be more uh, attuned to what the environment needs to support, indeed, the world population. And this is what I have to share with you today. If you have any clarification question about the, this carbon cycle, please put your question in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'm going to put here a link to the water cycle right here, and you'll see there's always something to something more to learn from my videos. I'll see you there.